Hey, welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations with leaders in digital infrastructure. My name is Emily Scherer from JSA. I am joined right now by Benjamin Von Seeger. He is the CEO of BVS Group. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited to be here. Yeah. I'm Finally. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm excited to hear more about BVS Group. So that's where I want to start. Can you tell us more about your areas of focus and how you support businesses navigating today's digital infrastructure landscape? Absolutely. So with my background in the digital infrastructure spanning 25 years in four big exits that I did, um, we are looking at a brand new chapter. We have artificial intelligence. We have a huge demand in power. So my role is advising the industry leader. So I work very closely with a lot of venture capitalists. Uh, I'm extremely conservative when it comes to return on investments. So investors love me. I do also work with the data centers. I also do site selections. I also do this at the global level. So I travel quite a bit, over 4 million miles in the last few years. And we are looking at how we can improve the ESG for our sector. Meaning, if you look in Europe, we have environmental sustainability governance, GDPR, data residency. United States, we have California. So we pollute a lot. We are building a lot of data centers. There are more to come in the near future. I know that artificial intelligence kind of um, uh, intrigued the market more. We've seen what happened with DeepSeek. We've seen what happened with some cancellations from Microsoft. So here's where the experts are coming in. We've seen last year a lot of influx of people coming into our industry. Now it's like, okay, the house is on fire. We can move the furniture. The professionals have to come in. So this is where we excel because we know how to do risk assessment. We know how to uh, to assess what's going to happen with uh, with uh, AI. Is is this deep seek going to put a ripple effect, a domino effect in the industry? I believe not. I believe short term we saw a cancellation from Microsoft. But we have one major issue that we're all trying to resolve together, and that's power. We have to figure out how to deliver the power, because no matter where this industry is going to go, we're still going to have to build the data centers. Yeah, absolutely. You sound like a helpful guy to have in the back pocket for digital infrastructure so. operators. You know a lot about a lot, and you know the trending topics. So yeah, yes. thank you for that so, overview. And we have yeah. to look at, uh, at uh, I know nobody wants to get political on this one, but the tariffs are here to stay. DeepSeek is here to stay. So now the people that have done this in the past and they know to look for revenue somewhere else, this revenue is going to be paused. But again, I still believe that as long as we have the power available, mm -hmm. we're still going to build. But now we have to risk assessment and we have to go from a charging $20 million per megawatt. Now with tariffs, maybe I'm going to look at 25 to $28 million per megawatt. So this is where Christmas Day I had conference calls because after the election, everybody was, okay, so how this is going to impact our sector? Right. What you guys did after that com crash, after September 11, after 2008, after the COVID. So I yeah. sustained four major events. Uh, that no one had control over it yeah. and we still came out successful on top. So it is a lot of hard work, but I'm extremely excited because the industry has now a lot of professionals. There are a lot of professors in the enterprise market where we don't have to go and train them and teach them. Now they know. Now yeah. we have to go straight to meetings and we have to make sure that we move this forward because a lot of people that don't understand probably are watching this. Everything that you do today is going through a data center. Every yeah. picture that you take, every x-ray that you take, every uh, CT scan at your doctor's office, it's ending up in one of our data centers. Yep, absolutely. And I want to touch on scaling from there. I feel like this Perfect. is a good segue. Yeah, to so companies need to scale efficiently while staying competitive. And I'm curious, what common challenges do you see businesses facing when it comes to growth and strategy? And how does BBS Group solve So as I just mentioned, the main challenge right now that we have globally is yeah. the power. So we have statistics from CBI Richard Ellis and from JLL where we clearly see that right now the Internet of Things, the digital infrastructure space is using 1% of the power globally. We have over 11,000 data centers globally that are registered with CBR Richard Ellis. Those are real data centers with multiple customers, with multiple networks. Alone in the United States, there are 5,300 data centers and we're still falling short. So we need to scale in a smart way. And that's what I'm saying, build Rome and wait for them to come. We did this model 25 years ago and Equinix and Terramark at the time almost failed. So I learned from my mistakes and I would suggest to everyone that you build first once you have 50% on the contract and you have a reliable tenant. What yeah. we don't want to see, we don't want to see what happened in 2004, in 2008 and before the pandemic where we have a bunch of empty boxes across the globe and 
they're being picked up for ten cents to the dollar. So right. again, coming back to the geopolitical spectrum, the tariffs, the deep sea, because those are the hottest subjects around the last three, four weeks. Yeah. I still believe that the, the 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 progress is there. We just have to be very, very smart the way we build. And the, um, the good news is that the equipment that we use in the industry right now is much more powerful than it was five or ten years ago. Yep. That's why we see a lot of spillover into the edge markets. Ten years ago, we'll never build data center in outside of Atlanta, outside of Austin. Now we have to do that. Why? Because I have the power of it. So it's the moment we have power, we have gold. And then around it, you need people like me that have been in industry for a very long time. They know how to find revenue. So, for example, if AI is going to slow down for the next six to nine months, you got to move quickly into enterprise. You got to move into the federal sector. Um, political or not, the new administration is very, very clearly heavily behind the data centers. So they already announced 180 billion investment plus the Stargate, which is not a 500 billion. So all these are going to be built by the people that are in these rooms. Yes. Because they're going to come to us, the experts. So are we going to see a slowdown for the next 60, 90 days? Uh, Probably, but uh, looking forward and looking at what Mark Gans and all the other colleagues in the industry said, we are still absorbing over two giga a year. Alone in 2023, Virginia absorbed over almost 3,000 megawatts. Wow. Just to give you yeah. perspective, the next city was Beijing with 1,600 megawatts, and the third place was London with 1,200. I don't have the numbers for 2024, but we are on track to, uh, like Mark Gansi said, this is a one-time opportunity, yeah. and I'm extremely excited to work with my colleagues because now we are literally solving problems for the future. Yes, and I, one of those problems that I want to talk about is AI because we haven't yes. really dove into AI yet. So I want to ask you your thoughts on that. It's reshaping how organizations approach strategy and operations. How do you see AI influencing leadership decisions and business models in the infrastructure sector? So AI is the is the latest boom. And as I said, I believe strongly that it's a one-time uh, uh, um, opportunity in our lifetime because like the industrial revolution, AI is going to change, already has the way we interact, the way we build. So I'm doing personally right now, for example, a very large project to start of Atlanta is going to be over 1.7 gig. I have two others in the final that are over two gigawatts. We're going to start seeing the EcoScale data centers. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's uh, very impressive that a lot of companies that used to build um, office buildings, different infrastructure, airports like Schweier Construction, for example, they are coming into this industry to help us out because we are running behind. I mean, just if you look at the numbers for United States, um, we have all these data centers that have been announced in, in the top markets, Atlanta, Dallas, Northern Virginia, Chicago, New York, Santa Clara. 86% of those are already pre-sold. And we haven't even broke yeah. ground to, to do anything with them. Yeah. So um, I know that a lot of people are skeptical. Oh, this is the end of it. Well, just because uh, an app came out to the market and they say they can do what they say they can do, there are still so many other applications that have to be developed and deployed over artificial intelligence in all the verticals, from medical to financial to the media, that is going to require NVIDIA, that is going to require cooling with water, that is going to require what we build. So five years ago, you say I built a data center of five megawatts, 10 megawatts. Now I'm having meetings with two gigawatts and I was involved yeah. in the last 18 months on a project that was 24 megawatts all the way up to 3.5 gigawatts in Dubai. Yeah. Huge, and we have to look scale. for power. We have to look for, and the, the one thing that I really like about this, because this gets me very creative. I'm originally yeah. German, but I spent a lot of time here. I like to see a little bit more about environment because we consume the power, we pollute yeah. a lot, but it's extremely uh, um, um Interesting at the moment, there are so many companies that are coming with ideas to produce lithium batteries. You see deals that have been done in the industry, we can talk about this live public, with geosystems when Meta got 150 megawatts in Reno, Nevada. Yeah. If I would tell you five years ago, we're going to build a data center in Reno, Nevada, Ben, you're totally crazy out of your yeah. mind. But now we're going there. Why? Because they control the power. They're going to be co you're always going to be connected to the grid. We do not want to overlast the grid. Right. Because again... Um, Mark Anzi said uh, two years ago in 18 months, you're going to run out of power. The 18 months are up by the end of this year. So this year it's breaking point. So yeah. seeing, seeing um, 
um, ideas that we have never seen uh, in the industry. So me getting creative and um, advising uh, uh, data centers to use the cold water from the Atlantic and push the heat from data center yeah. in the homes of the people. So we have to integrate those data centers where people understand that as important as an airport, that's what a data center does for us right now. So and there is no way to go back. Yeah. So in building this AI infrastructure, I firmly believe that this is going to help us excel and probably move above and beyond. So Absolutely. there are also there are also questions on how we can store permanent data on on the moon or on other planets. So this is I know I know it sounds futuristic, but it's coming. Yeah. It, it is coming because we develop sources where we can have lithium batteries that, that are the size of a credit card, it can power an entire house. Right. We have solar power, we have wind, we have geothermal, we have uh, dams. We, we, are trying, yeah. we are trying to find every, every uh, uh, kilowatt of power wherever we can find it. Right. And as clean as we can produce it, the better. Yes. Thank you so much. What yeah. wonderful insights that you've shared Thanks here so today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank I really you appreciate for being it. here. Yeah, it's great yes. to meet you. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. You guys have a great show. Thank yeah, you guys. you as well. And to all of our viewers, thanks for tuning in and have a great Metro Connect. Thank you very much.